The following presentation deals with sins against nature which violate the fifth and sixth commandments. We advise parents to view the talk and then determine if they will or will not permit their children to view this video. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me and allowing me to speak. Um, transgenderism, if uh, I could just summarize it in, as a couple points, basically is an ideology that says we are not our bodies. We are what we think. We are our thoughts. And every single person is conceived with a gender identity. And this people, people's proclaimed, self-proclaimed gender identity trumps every single biological marker for sex. But do not fear, so, so people can be born in the wrong body, see, because we are who or what we think. We could be born in the wrong body and it's okay because medicine can safely conform the body with uh, toxic hormones and mutilating surgeries to match whatever is in your mind. And um, just a, a, a comment about um, the, the cover slide that I have here. Um, the, young, the young woman, she's now about 28, Katie Anderson. She is the first detransitioner I have met who is a Catholic. Um, there are many young women now who are speaking out who were basically told they were troubled teenagers and they came to believe the lie that all of their angst, depression, um, all, all of their being distraught was due to being trapped in the wrong body. Um, and they were convinced to go on toxic hormones, have mutilating surgeries, only to grow into their mid-20s and realize they were lied to. Um, and that has a lot. The reason many of these teenagers do come to, to re-embrace reality in their mid-20s is because that is the natural development of the human brain. Of our, um, it's not until age 25 that our frontal lobes are fully um, matured and that part of the brain is what is really necessary to evaluate reality and risks versus benefits. So Katie is um, very brave, as I said, she's about 28 now and she is uh, from Massachusetts and at least locally in the New England area now, she is going to, um, to churches to speak to families and anyone who will listen to try and spare them the suffering that she's endured. So, um, and again, this has been mentioned by other speakers too, of course, we had Cardinal Kafara um, tell us that Lucia said, there will come a time when the decisive battle between the kingdom of Christ and that of Satan will be over marriage and the family. And this transgender lie, this transgender issue is tearing families apart. What I wanna do is I wanna go back to Genesis, an icon of uh, what is marriage marriage and family. And I've started to try and tell audiences, even my fellow physicians, this isn't about science. This is about an attack on reality and reality's creator. This is about an attack on God. And we can see that if we go back to Genesis. Right there, it says, let's make, let's make man in our image, an immortal soul and a body a body-soul composite, not one or the other. And the body is sexed, male or female. This is also Trinitarian in the, I'm, I'm, this audience understands that. Uh, the, the exchange of love between God the Father and God the Son brings forth the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the love between a husband and wife brings forth babies, new life souls to populate heaven. The transgender ideology is a lie from Satan, but it's not a new lie. It's an old lie. It's not about science. It's a cult. It's a false religion. Ancient pagan Gnosticism. Gnosticism basically said the body 
is the result of sin. The body, the physical realm is evil. What is pure, what is good is the soul, the spiritual. It's a dualism. And this is precisely what transgenderism has moved us toward. It's been presented in science, but it's not. It's a false religion. And I just want to grab, I had a quote. I haven't found one from a Catholic author yet who says it this well. But this is, um, in 2017, uh, an Anglican bishop, N.T. Wright, wrote in a letter to the London Times, and he said, the confusion about gender identity is a modern, now internet-fueled, form of the ancient philosophy of Gnosticism. The Gnostic, the one who has secret knowledge, the one who has discovered the secret of who I really am, behind the deceptive outward appearance of the body. This involves denying the goodness or even the ultimate reality of the natural world. And of course, there are serious consequences to this, for our children especially. Now understand, just as in the icon, and I won't stay on this slide too long, the icon of marriage is about love and life giving, Satan cannot create, he can only deconstruct. So using the drugs like puberty blockers and the cross-sex hormones cannot change your sex, but will make a boy appear more feminized or androgynous and chemically castrates boys. If you put a normal healthy boy on puberty blockers, you're chemically castrating them. And that's the puberty blockers, Lupron, is still used in many states to chemically castrate sex offenders. This is what we're doing to some gender confused eight year old children. The girls who are gender confused are being put on the puberty blockers, which if you put any child, boy or girl, on a puberty blocker plus the cross-sex hormones, you will sterilize them. They will never be able to have babies. The girls then get put on testosterone and they will come to appear, they will be more muscular girls and they are then put on the medical surgical pathway to have breasts removed, healthy breasts removed, as young as age 13. So we are castrating, sterilizing, and mutilating children. I mean, th this is clearly the culture of death. If we don't kill you in the womb, we're gonna target you, castrate, sterilize, and mutilate you on the other side. So how can, how, <laughs> how can doctors be pushing this? Um, I, I don't have a, a lot of time to go into it. So this, the short answer is, sadly, um, leftist ideologues have infiltrated from the education system from, I mean, and now they're teaching preschool all the way up to graduate medical schools. Many of these leftist ideologues in medicine also suffer from the condition they are pushing. Was there a fake Sister Lucia? We know letters were forged in her name, but was she also impersonated by another woman. Now, Father Gruner addressed this years ago, but new evidence has surfaced. So the latest edition of the Fatima Crusader, issue 132, covers what anyone needs to know about this controversial topic. It's a must read. Contact the Fatima Center to request a copy, and please send us your feedback. We're interested. Our Lady of Fatima, ora pro nobis. For example, one of the most, um, uh, one of the most vocal pedi pediatricians behind this, uh, Dr. Joanna Olson Kennedy, she is married to a trans man who is a psychotherapist. One of the leading surgeons doing this to teenagers is Dr. Marcy Bowers. Dr. Marcy Bowers is a man who, a trans woman, Okay, so, so the lunatics are running the asylum and they have been for a very long time. Um, I 
receive, I have received many emails from medical students saying, Dr. Pratella, thank you so much for saying the simple fact that sex is genetic. It's, it's in our genes, it cannot be changed, because if I were to say that as a medical student, I would be sent for remediation. So what is now being taught and, and by activists, as well as at the, in high school to, to a medical school, well, you know, sex is not real. This whole idea about being man or man or woman uh, that's a complete social construct because don't you know we have intersex people? Okay, now real, uh, real easy to break it down. We don't have intersex people. We have people with disorders of sex development. We have people with intersex conditions. Zero. 0.02%, so two out of 10,000 live births, you will find a baby with a birth defect that affects the reproductive system. So they are using birth defects to confuse people and make you think that sex is a spectrum, that we don't have males and females, we just have this gamish spectrum, no. In all of the life sciences, whether you're speaking about plants or animals, sex is a binary. And a plant, for example, is considered a male plant or a male flower if it donates genetic material during the reproductive act. Same thing among animals. Males donate genetic material during reproduction. Females plant or animal, receives genetic information during reproduction. So in human beings, the women produce eggs or ova and the males produce sperm. This is, this is something everyone used to understand. Barring genetic disorders, females will have two X chromosomes and males will have an XY chromosome and it's the same in every cell of the body. So, you know, some pediatricians like Joanne Olson Kennedy, I'd mentioned before, will tell her patients and the parents of these kids, oh, their brains are just a different sex from the body. Okay, that's complete science fiction. No, that's not how it works. From the moment of fertilization, every single cell has this, uh, the same genetic sex. Um, and no drug, no surgery can change your sex. This is so dangerous. What's happening in preschools now, they are showing preschool children images of the gender unicorn to really just scramble their minds and give them these gender-bending beliefs. And this is so dangerous because the normal development, it's age three is when boys and girls are just figuring out, oh, I'm a boy or I'm a girl. So they're just figuring it out. And it's not until age seven that most children would understand that boys grow into men. And it doesn't matter what those boys or men wear or do to their bodies, they're still male. It's not until age seven that most girls understand, oh, girls grow into women. And it doesn't matter you know, what I do or how I dress. This is my sex and this belongs to me. So it really is psychological child abuse to be um, taking kids, and I don't think I have to tell this audience that, but drag, drag queen story hours, not only is it psychological abuse, you are sexualizing children, and many of those men, um, they're very disturbed, and many of them are pedophiles themselves. I mean, this is, I pray every day, Lord, please come. <laughs> Oh my gosh, our lady, I mean, uh, we can't say enough rosaries. We cannot say enough rosaries, our poor children. Um, I also like to make sure that audiences understand there are at least 16 uh, psychiatric uh, case reports and studies to demonstrate that talk therapy alone can help adults and teenagers and children who are struggling with their sexual identity, their gender identity. So talk therapy alone can help them because it's usually due to traumas, past ch childhood traumas, 
um, and or mental illness, it can, it can be treated and they, children and adults can come to embrace their bodies. Um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Paul McHugh, he's in the upper left hand um, side, wonderful, dedicated Catholic, considered to be um, probably the most important psychiatrist of the last half century. Um, and he was always honored until he stood up and he was probably, for a long time, the only psychiatrist to say, hey, everybody, this gender dysphoria, this transgender identification, it's the same kind of disorder as anorexia nervosa and other body uh, mis misconceptions about bodies. All behavior, including sexual behavior, so this whole LGBTQ++, nobody is born LGBTQ++. It's sexual behavior. All behaviors, they're not stamped into us as some innate genetic uh, course that we have to follow. All of our behavior results from a combination of things. Sure, we're made of DNA, so what we're made of contributes to our behavior, but the two pieces of the puzzle that contribute far more than our biology is environment, how we grow up, the experiences we have, and the free will choices we make. So no one, I don't think anyone chooses to be attracted to someone of the same sex or chooses to be uh, divorced from their body, so to speak not in the way we choose what socks to put on in the morning, but we do make choices such as, okay, who am I going to befriend? What clubs am I going to join? Um, all right, I was, I was accidentally exposed to pornography. Am I going to cl click that button again? Am I going to you know, do things that make me become addicted to certain behaviors? So, um, when it comes to transgender uh, belief, when it comes to transgender belief, um, adult, among adult men, and this is when I first started speaking out against medicalizing the children and sterilizing and mutilating children, I received a call from a therapist in San Francisco and to thanking me, and then he said, I have worked with men who, um, dresses women and have taken the hormones and the surgeries. I've worked with this population for 20 years. He said every single one of my patients had horrific abuse as children. Um, and they are not, so it, it, we are not doing medicine, big medicine, big pharma is exploiting these adults as well as the children. I mean, they are truly suffering. They are truly suffering. We, we have to pray for them. And um, now among the children today, what we are seeing is it's mostly girls. The vast majority of these girls, and they tend to be teenagers, the vast majority of these girls have a history of depression, a history of anxiety. They may be on the autism spectrum. They may be on the ADHD spectrum. Um, boys similarly could be on the ADHD spectrum with anxiety and depression. If those underlying issues are treated, their gender confusion gradually goes away. It gradually goes away because they need the time to go through puberty and embrace their true selves. So pediatric medical transition, I alluded to this. Um, what is truly outrageous is that the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, as well as the American Psychological Association, says that children as young as 18 months know that they're, they're stuck in the wrong body. Um, puberty blockers, you know, we can just go ahead and do that when the kids are eight years old. Puberty is not a disease. It's, puberty is not a disease. It's not fun. I, I don't think it's fun for most, you know, if we think back. But it is not a disease. It is a critical developmental period. 
And when we block that, we are robbing our kids of normal, healthy development. Cross-sex hormones, that means you give little boys estrogen, uh, super high doses of estrogen that they should never encounter. Little girls get super high doses of testosterone that they should never encounter. And then as I said, surgeries, the double mastectomies on girls are happening in this country as young as 13. Um, surgeries, surgical castration of boys and or other bottom surgeries um, are happening in boys at age 17. So. Um, we are told by the other side that having kids dress, uh, for example, allowing boys to dress as girls and having, uh, having either sex change their names and pronouns is no big deal. Suffice it to say, uh, Dr. Walter Shum is a, um, an excellent sociologist who has reanalyzed the so-called evidence that social transition is, is harmless. Well, he figured out, because he's an excellent scientist, he figured out that the authors had to have been withholding data. He contacted its two major authors, um, psychologists, he contacted them and said, do you mind sending me your entire data set? Well, they did. He reanalyzed the data and he proved that families who allow their children to change their names, pronouns, clothing, et cetera, um, who are gender confused, they do not have better mental health. It's what happens is just what we expect. When you reinforce the confusion and reinforce the lie, their self-esteem actually dropped the longer that they were affirmed in this false belief. The Catholic Medical Association's uh, medical journal was, did publish his report, others, you know, you can't be politically incorrect, so other, uh, other medical journals refused it. Uh, we are told, we are, so yeah, we're told, so we're told that affirming their confusion is, is harmless. We're told that suppressing their puberty, treating puberty like a disease is harmless. Nothing could be further from the truth. As you would expect, if you reaffirm someone's false belief and you block the normal development of their body, um, what we see is that 100%, almost 100% of the kids will then go on and claim a transgender identity. If you look back at this phenomenon, if you look back to prior to 2013, 85 to 95% of the kids who were gender confused would grow out of their confusion by young adulthood. So prior to the propaganda campaign, I mean, right now you've got preschool teachers, drag queen story hours, the social media, internet, movies, uh, books. It, our kids cannot escape it. Please, homes if you have kids, homeschool them. Do not put them in the public schools. Um, if you have Catholic schools, you need to vet those Catholic schools very carefully. The, the, the most protective thing you can do is to homeschool your children. So puberty blocking, the most common med medication used is Lupron. If you read the package insert, the package insert itself says, even if this medication is used to treat disease, it causes unstable emotions and may cause new mental illness. So these doctors are taking Lupron and they're giving it to children who are already emotionally disturbed. How they got away for so long with saying that this helps them, and they still claim it helps them, but the United Kingdom was the first, uh, was the first to shut down a ch the children's gender clinic. They had a single gender clinic in the United Kingdom, and they were the first one, because there were many whistleblowers that came out to document that the children that they had been putting on puberty blockers were faring worse than the children who did not have the blockers. They found that one third got worse, one third had no improvement. So that basically they were two thirds of their patients 
who they, they claimed they were affirming, you know, as their true selves, um, were still suffering significant mental distress. Uh, with Lupron, we also know that the children are robbed of their normal bone development. So these young kids who were put on puberty blockers, they can expect to have um, severe osteoporosis and bone fractures as young adults. Um, we also know that we're disrupting the organization of the brain. So we might be impacting their IQ in a bad way. I mentioned before that if you once you combine the puberty blockers and the cross-sex hormones, you sterilize them. And they also, um, these children ha who have continued on the blockers and the cross-sex hormones cannot function sexually in a normal way either. Risk of the estrogen to the, to the boys or males, blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, cancers, diabetes. Um, risks of testosterone to the girls. Risk of heart attacks, diabetes, liver disease, cancers. Are we preventing suicide? Definitely not. Um, this is important. I know I only have two minutes left. Everyone, uh, everyone is always saying, oh my gosh, kids with this transgender belief, they have such a high risk of suicide. Their risk of suicide is no different from any other child at risk of suicide. So if you have anorexia nervosa, you have depression, autism, your rate, your risk of suicide is the same, it's elevated, but it's the same as the trans-identified child. What we want to do to address suicide, it is talk therapy. It's individual counseling and family counseling when you're dealing with, with children. Um, does transition work for adults? Even for adults, transition does not work. We've had two Swedish studies, and in Sweden, they are extremely pro-LGBT. In, in both cases, demonstrated that the adults who transition with hormones and surgery do worse than adults who are not given the surgery. Or, um, and uh, the most impressive one with regard to suicide, this was a study in, in Sweden that followed over 300 adults who had transitioned, followed them for 30 years, and their suicide rate was still 19 times greater than the general public. So again, it's, there is no science, there is no science behind the transgender movement. And my last slide, this is an icon used by a transgender activist who um, sort of stalks both the uh, two organizations I'm with, the American College of Pediatricians and Advocates Protecting Children. And it is just so telling. I mean, it, clearly, you know, this is the age of sin. Reject the order of creation. Revel in the annihilation of man as the image of God. Destroy, plot designs of death, disfigure the face of man and woman. So I, I, this is Lucifer all, all over it. Um, and um, wow. what's very important, it doesn't end with tra transgenderism, is transhumanism 101. Because again, what's the bottom, the bottom line? Oh, I'm not my body. I am my consciousness. I, I think, therefore I am. And if we can chemically castrate children and sterilize and just you know, mutilate the body, well, why not insert a few nano chips in here and there and, you know, create a cyborg or whatnot? So, it, and this is the connection, this is why World Economic Forum, globalism, transhumanism, we're going to have this big one world green pagan LGBTQ plus religion. So, so this is this is what keeps me on my well, my you know, and I have four children, and you know, who would like to get married and and have their own children. So, this really keeps me on my knees praying my rosary. <laughs> so, thank you.